Hallelujah. YouTube is live. Hallelujah. Lord. <laughs> Can you believe I got fired from the calendar factory? Why? Because I took a day off. Must have been an important day that he took off because he got fired from the calendar factory. All right. Well, it is... Uh, it's now 25 minutes after. Time to get ourselves started here tonight, as we always do, and head on into this night. This is going to be a good night. Um, very, very, very specific assignment of God. And we're glad to have you with us. We're glad to have your faith with us. We're glad. Was it leap <laughs> Good order, Rebecca. <laughs> Can't take them then. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? Wait, ten thousand comedians that didn't go back to work because they're enjoy uh, they're enjoying unemployment, and look who's trying. <laughs> and she's doing a good job. And she's doing a good job. <laughs> <clears throat> One thing about it, Rebecca, he took a leap of faith. <laughs> so once again, uh, Joshua, thank you for what a wonderful, wonderful Father's Day present. <laughs> Teresa Dowd, welcome, ma'am. It's good to have you with us. Hello. Good to have you with us tonight. And uh, it's good to have you with us any night. You know, the cool thing about our God is he is alive and well, and he is working um, in what we do. And thank you for being here with us. Thank you for being a part. Let's rise and we will make the Pledge of Allegiance and have a moment of silence, honor the troops like we do every night. From our assignment in God. When he gives you an assignment, one thing about it, you're faithful to your assignment. And he is faithful to do his work with you. Amen. And that's what we always count on here. Amen. Let's pray. I didn't get up yet. Let's pray for Teresa. Father, in Jesus' name. We speak over Teresa Dowd right here, right now, today, tonight. And we declare in Jesus' mighty name the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that as the centurion said all those, what, millenniums ago, he said, speak the word and my servant will be made whole. So right here. Right now, we speak over Teresa Dow. Thank you, Lord, that your word is true. That you took those stripes on your back and the prophecy in Isaiah 53 came to pass when you were there at the whipping post and they began to give you those stripes. You took every sickness. You took every disease. Yeah. You took every process that we would have to deal with on this earth. You carried it on your shoulders. When you said it is finished, you dropped it in hell where it belongs. And you provided the way, the door to salvation, the way to escape. You provided healing on your back through those stripes. And then when you raised all the way to heaven, and were seated by the Father. You sent us the Holy Spirit, who came and lives on the inside of us. And then you said, by the Holy Spirit, 
through the through brother Paul in the book of Romans, that the same spirit that raised you, Jesus, from the dead, lives inside our mortal bodies, giving us life, giving us health, giving us strength, giving us peace, giving us the blessing of the Lord that moves in us and with us and around us every day. And now, Lord, I declare that that same spirit that lives inside of our sister Teresa and our sister, um, uh, what's her name up here? Evelyn. Evelyn Robinson. Yes. That same spirit Evelyn. that lives on the inside of them. That spirit gives life to their mortal bodies right here, right now. And I give you glory for it. Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are doing a mighty work inside. And it's burning out that sickness and disease. It's burning out all the trauma that's connected to any of it. And it is producing life and courage and hope and strength on the inside of their bodies right now. We thank you for it. And we give you glory. And we give you the honor. And we give you the praise for it right here, right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say life, life. and life more abundantly life to our abundantly. sister. In the, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever this chemo is for, and our sister Evelyn. We rebuke you at your very root. We rebuke the effect of, our, of that on our sister. And we declare in the name of Jesus, life and life more abundantly right here, right now in Jesus' mighty name. For Sister Evelyn and Sister uh, Teresa Dowd and anyone else that's joined us, those of you that will come in the future and you'll say, hey, I need that. The anointing is here right now for you to receive it, for you to experience it, and for the blessing of God to be in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, let's just do it. Let's sing our song. You want to? Yes. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. I like that song. Don't you like that? I do. I love it. it Let's do it great. again. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You know, we don't just sing it. We don't just sing it. That's a beautiful song. But we don't just sing songs. We believe it. 
We declare it right now that Jesus is great and that he does miracles that are so great. And there is no one else like him. I mean, think about it. When you think about what Jesus has done for our lives, it is an amazing thing to see how we can sit in North Dakota. Rebecca's sitting in Lansing. Wilma's in Houghton Lake. Our friends around the world are wherever. Julian in Bamala in Malaysia, Singapore, all over Africa, around the world. You, when, you, when you think about how we just speak the word, how, how can I worship God here? How can I worship him here? And that same worship fill your house where you are. I'll tell you what. All of a sudden, you and I start looking at this thing saying, I, we, we, we serve a God who is really, 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 really big and really powerful. And he's doing a really, really big thing in our lives on a regular daily basis. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm, I'm fired up about it. I appreciate you coming, Teresa, and saying that. This is what God said to us on February 21st, that we are known as a healing room. And he said, I will have you known as a healing room. And that's what we are. And we do that every time we come here. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say it. I command all the technologies, I command all the technologies to, work to work for everybody anywhere around the world, around the world. in Jesus' mighty, Jesus mighty name for this whole program. Amen. Here we go. Rise together with me. We'll honor our troops tonight. Render your honor. Let's make our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, remember those who are missing in action, those who hold measure of devotion, those who during their time of combat experience uh, some form of a wound in their spirit, their soul, or their body. It's in honor of their brothers and sisters who served alongside of them and everyone who we call veteran today. This moment of silence will last for 21 seconds in honor of the 21 rifle volleys fired at the funeral of a fallen soldier. This moment of silence begins now. And now let's sing God Bless America. <clears throat> God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain to the prairie. To the ocean, white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home, God bless America, my home sweet home. <clears throat> and
And now, let's pray for the United States of America, and let's pray for this time together tonight. God and Father of every brave warrior down through American history, every brave warrior of the cross, every patriot, Every man, every woman who de has defended the freedom of this great nation in one way or another with their life, with their time, with their talent, with their prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bless your name right here, right now, today, in Jesus' mighty name. We speak over this time of prayer and over this whole session this evening. No weapon formed against us in any realm has any ability to prosper. Every tongue that would rise against us in judgment from any realm, we condemn it now and we command it to fall to the ground useless in the name of Jesus. We say every tongue that has risen against us, that if that, that tongue falls by the very process that they speak against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the confused people who would stand against us, help them to change their ways. Lord, may every Facebook, YouTube, and blog talk radio person who would do wrong by our United States Constitution, may they just look at their bosses and say, no, I'm not doing it. And we're not doing it. And you're not doing it. And defend the men and women of God out here like us. And help the, help us get this work accomplished unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. We speak it done right now in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say this. And pastor's voice, pastor's voice. is strong and bold. And cuts through all the principalities. Because Jesus is speaking through us. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare right now, not only will we, the community of faith, stand together in unity and agreement, but we declare that all around this world, the whole globe, everywhere, whether it's a flat earth or a round one, Every person on this earth who knows the voice of Jesus, we declare that not only do we have 24-hour-a-day prayer that is being raised to heaven, but it is bold, it is strong, it is confident, it is determined, and it is empowered by the, by the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and filled with the word of God and Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, you said how good and pleasant it is for the brothers to dwell together in unity. And we say it all over the world. No matter the denomination, we dwell together in unity. No matter the background or the culture, we dwell together in unity in the righteousness, joy, and peace of the Holy Spirit in our lives right here, right now, today. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, everybody do this. Lift your hands and say, now, Lord, now, Lord I receive your commanded blessing. I receive your commanded blessing. On me right now. On me right now. On my family right now. I because I'm dwelling together in unity with your assignment for this ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just say it. Now I receive that, that commanded blessing. Excuse me for a minute. Father, I'm praying, but can I just pause for a second? And have a seal a moment. Did you hear what the Holy Spirit just said? 
Now, how many times have we prayed Psalm 133 verses one through three in the last 465 days or whatever it was? At least five or six times in a day. Tonight's the first night I ever had the thought when I got done praying it to just lift my hands and say, I receive that commanded blessing. I receive that commanded blessing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I mean, since he's saying it, we can either act like we believe what we just prayed or just keep marching. So just do it. Put your hands out and just say, I receive that commanded blessing in every part of my life. And can you feel that anointing on that? That is anointed. Well, Pastor, I didn't know we were supposed to stop and do that. Well, it only took me, you know, like 1,736 times of saying it to finally get it. But don't lose hope. Wow. We lift our hands to you, our Father. Not only do we pray it and declare it, we receive that blessing on our life right now. The commanded blessing. Life ever. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wow. Thank you for it, Lord. Wow. <laughs> Lord. Father. In the name of Jesus. May that revelation break through in the lives of every, every believer, every patriotic organization, every person who has made one step toward you to be in order with you. May that commanded blessing come. Lord, may those that are just fooling around in the kingdom playing religious games. May that, may that distinct difference of the commanded blessing be there and the other one just standing there saying a bunch of religious words, wondering where the blessing is so that we'll be drawn to the blessing, yeah. not religiosity. Yeah. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. You are great. <laughs> like David, Selah. I don't know if Selah and Wow are the same, but Selah Wow. In the mighty name of Jesus, we receive it right now. Now, number two. Thank you, Father, that you established it. In the book of Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord spoke to Isaiah and he declared the, you, Jesus, are the lawgiver. You are the judge, and you are our king. We declare it right now over all three branches of our government in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare Jesus is Lord in the United States of America right now. We declare our brothers and sisters who are around the world praying right now that they named Jesus Lord over their nation. In the worst nations of the world, Lord, when the believers declare Jesus is Lord, it goes through the heavenlies and destroys principalities and powers because they have no power against you. We declare you are Lord, Jesus, high above every principality. High above every power, high above every might, every dominion, high above any name that anyone has tried to name here in this nation, 
We declare Jesus <laughs> is Lord in the United States of America. Wow, 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 wow. You are Lord. <laughs> I can see him on the side of the mountain again tonight. Just declaring, behold, I am coming quickly. Wow, 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 wow. Hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you gave us the picture of you standing in the rotunda of the Capitol. And we know you're still there because we're still speaking Jesus is Lord. Now, right here tonight, Lord, what's our assignments? What else do we got to say? You already got it. Say it with me. Good politicians stay good. And be delivered from the foolish and the ignorant men. Ready? Now you do this. Get you a big ball of the presence and the word of God. And throw it toward your capital. Now, if you're directionally challenged. Don't worry. Just toss it out there somewhere. And watch God take your prayers Ready? I'm going to throw ours toward Bismarck, North Dakota. And we declare right now that all of the politicians in Bismarck are delivered from the foolish and the ignorant men. Now, everybody point that way. <laughs> all right. You're like, Pastor, how do you know? Point toward Washington, D.C. And just make the declaration. I declare everyone in Washington, D.C. I declare everyone in Washington, D.C. Is delivered from the foolish and the ignorant men. I declare right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, these wicked politicians that have removed this ban on harvesting baby parts and selling oh, them. Goodness, oh I declare you do not have any right or, or, yeah. or position in this nation. Amen. Amen. Your, wit, your heart is wicked and perverse. And the same destruction that you put toward our children is now on your life. It comes back to you a hundredfold return. Amen. Wear it like a garment. Father, may every one of our good politicians stay good. And be delivered from these foolish and ignorant men. And may the wicked ones be seen so perverse and so wicked that they don't have any ability to have a staffer with them. And you, God, remove them immediately from our government so they no longer can do this wickedness in the name of Jesus. We're not waiting for the next election. You didn't wait for an election to take out Herod. You didn't wait for an election to take out Pharaoh. You didn't wait for an election to take out Belshazzar. You didn't wait for an election to take out Nebuchadnezzar. You dealt with the issue because your people said, move now today in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Now, we turn our, our prayers. We turn our prayers right now to the uh, protectors of this great nation. The fivefold ministry and all the believers. On the spiritual side. And the military. And all of the police force. On the weapon side. We bless all of the protectors. And we declare. That we function together in unity. Them, they're trained to carry that. That, that weapon of war. And we're, tra we're, ca we're trained. And we carry our weapon of war. And we function together tonight in unity. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray it with me. Send revival. Send revival. 
to all of our protectors. May there be revival in the military, revival in the police, revival in the, in the great um, halls of Congress. We declare the fire of revival sweeping across this nation, burning out the wickedness in a way that wickedness has no ability to run. Do anything but just run and say, I'm getting out of the nation of holiness. We call it done now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> and as we pray so often, wherever there's a troop tonight, a warrior, a veteran, who's struggling with the effect of war and some declaration somebody made over them, I declare tonight that the spirit of the warrior that's on the inside of you rises up because the angels of the Lord stand around you and they cause you to rise and stand and be strong. Never again weak. And you see your place by an infallible proof of almighty God. And you walk in it and you function in it and you turn that lion, that roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah on the inside of you into the roar that changes your life. And we declare, not, not because we got a big governmental program, because you and I, the people of God, declare no more homeless people on the streets of the United States of America. Amen. Say it with me. No more homeless. Because every community takes care of their own folks. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. That according to the book of Hebrews, there is an innumerable host of heavenly angels that surround us and protect us and keep us safe in all of our ways. Thank you that that innumerable host of angels are protecting our great constitution and the Bill of Rights and destroying all the effects of the enemy trying to stop it. May they run in fear of the great United States of America. And in that prophetic word that you gave to President George Washington, actually General George Washington then, all the nation's of the world standing against us could not destroy the power of our unity. And although we didn't see it then, it's because your commanded blessing comes when we stand in unity. And we stand in unity now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody Shout glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's do our declaration of, uh, do we have them in there yet? Here's the deal. All right. I'm going to. I'm going to throw one in right now to do. Go ahead. Keep going. But I'm going to put one. Hey, Ken Brumbaugh with Dan Coddle is watching. Now, I'm not sure what Brother Dan does. But since I looked up from my prayer, I've received one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven. Dan Coddle is watching. I'm not sure what's going on with this. But maybe. God really wants me to know that Brother Dan Cottle is watching. And I thank you, Dan, for watching tonight. We love you, man. Glory for the heavenly host of angel. That is God's system. Now, I want you to look at this. I just put it in there. It's Psalm 103, 19. Everybody declare this out loud with me right now. Psalm 103, 19. You're just waving a hand? <laughs> hey, wait. Everybody stop and wave back at Brother Dan. <laughs> That's awesome, man. 
<clears throat> That's amazing. Uh, I, I, I don't know how it happens, but I, I, it's really cool. It's really cool. Sister Phyllis K. Raymond's with us somewhere. She is, and Wilma is here. Sister she Wilma's is. here. All right. Ken, Ken Brumbaugh's with us. Here we go, Psalm 103. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Amen. Bless, the Lord, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Now, why do you read that, Pastor? Because that's the verse of scripture that tells us that when you and I speak this word together, that angels take the word we speak and they run through the heavenlies, bringing it to pass. They hearken to the voice of the word of God. We're now going to do the, the prayer and declaration against the isms. You ready? Here we go. Say it with me. We bind all the effects of the isms. It is impossible for your wickedness to overcome the United States of America's righteousness, which is our strength. God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You have no right or claim or historic authority to our promised land. We know who we are. We will not yield our weapons of protection to you. You may think we have been driven off, but we, the children of God, have joined, returned to our God and have joined together in agreement to rebuild every wall that seems to be torn down in the realm of the spirit and in the natural. And we declare that every weapon you have formed against freedom comes back on you now. And every pit you have dug, you fall into it yourself immediately. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 144, 14. Our enemies will not invade our land, and there will be no breach in our walls. These are the walls we are building, the walls of righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, the Patriot Prayer of Dedication. Now, I want you to get this. When you think about it. When we say this together in unity, we get to be finished with it and say, now I receive the commanded blessing. Amen. Because we're standing together in unity. Yeah. My, my, my. Here we go. Father, help no, us the living to, to be dedicated, dedicated to the unfinished, unfinished work which, which these fought for. for. And, and so nobly advanced. advanced. Help, Help us be, be dedicated, dedicated to the great task that remains before us, that, that from these honored fallen, we, we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave that last full measure of devotion. And we highly resolve that these shall not have fallen in vain, and that this nation under God is experiencing a new birth of freedom right here, right now, today. And this government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Long will our land be bright. 
with freedom's holy light. Protect us, Lord, by thy great might, great God, our King. Forgive us of our sin, Lord, and heal our land. We seek your face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And then when we're done. I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defender still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. You ready? Do this now. Lift your hands and say, I receive the commanded blessing. I receive the commanded blessing. Life evermore. Woo! God is doing a mighty work right here on the inside of us. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, so, Brother Dan, I got to ask a question. Is there like a place where it says you can wave your hand? And we is waving back. We are waving back. We is waving back. But, but this, is, this is interesting. Because if that's what that is, if there's a place where you can wave, which I don't know, because I'm not, I'm never on that, you would think that would see it right here. Is there like a place somewhere that says send a wave? I don't know. Okay, well, I'm not going to take a bunch of time on that, but I'm going to call Dan later and say, hey, explain the wave yeah, to me. Yeah, how do we wave to Unless it's just the Everybody do the way. <laughs> it's not as effective with just one person, but keep going. It's kind of <laughs> Somebody coming by going, oh, my Lord, what's this guy doing now? And then a little bit later, they'll be doing shots. Look at this. This is quite a church group right here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Well, it's what what's cool about it is it don't matter what it is that's it's happening. If you're waving, wave. I what I think is that's absolutely amazing. Uh, it is. And here's what I want to know. Because the reason I ask that is if it is a wave that somebody's waving, and I don't know that that's what it is, I want to make sure I say, same to you, brother, and wave back. Because when I was living in eastern Kentucky. You nodded and waved at everybody you drove by. Driving down the road, here comes the car at you. You, you. you nod your head down and you wave. Or if it was somebody you know, you, and you, it's like you did it every single time. And uh, so if that's the case of what's going on here, uh, we want to be able to nod and wave back. So if in the middle of tonight you see me nodding like this, Oh, I'm all right, really. I'm just, it's Eastern Kentucky coming at me. Everybody be coming out casting out demons. And <laughs> They'll go get the whole intercessory prayer group. We got to help this guy. He's got some bad twerk. We call that thing twitch. It's like ticks. No, I'm just nodding and waving. Hallelujah. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, we're glad to have you with us. And just in case you were late getting here, um, we had a really good set of jokes tonight. All right. Really, really, really good set of jokes. And I want to repeat one of them to you because it was so good. I can't let it go without sharing it with everyone. All right. Can you believe I got fired 
from the calendar factory. And all I did was take a day off. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I see everyone in Tennessee does that. I thought somebody knew me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No. 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 Rebecca. And and you know the the Hawaiian peace sign is is not really the Hawaiian peace sign, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, if you don't know how to have good fun like this, still be holy, spiritual, righteous, and conquer. Well, come hang around us because we do not do that. We welcome all of you. You know. We really wanted to see everybody when we got to Michigan, but we had to get some very specific things done. We didn't see anybody except we, Dan we, and Josh. We, we didn't see anybody. We saw Brother Dan for a couple hours one afternoon oh, yeah, to go go visit around in Flint and see some things, and we're working on that. That's you know The next step is here goes the communication, and we command communication work quickly in the mighty name of Jesus. So you get an email in, right? Yeah, everybody say communication, communication. Function, quickly. function quickly. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, angels of the Lord, surround us, protect us, keep us safe, and bring to us everything we need to go immediately into the into the Amen. word of God. Amen. Amen. Good to have you with us, Joachim. Good to have you with us. With us. With us. He has a new tongue. In the mighty name of Jesus, it's good to have you with us. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, um, tonight's going to be a good night. We got a good study we're going to do. And um, you know what's interesting about how God works here in this community of faith um, is he gives us an assignment and then we just stick to it. Uh, and we're glad to have you here and be a part of what we're doing. <clears throat> There's been a lot of people who've come by and said, no, that's not my place. But see, that's what we were studying this morning and the noon prayer time about God putting us in the body where he wants us to be. And if you weren't a part of this morning, Make sure you get, get that out. And um, probably about 15 minutes into it, we start reading the word of God. And we read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. is a very, very powerful chapter about the body of Christ. And uh, the cool thing about being in the body, <clears throat> once you're in the body where you belong, miracles, signs, wonders, and everything happens in your life. And um, God places you in the body as he wishes you would be, as he will as he wills for you to be. And, Amen. you know, the old Baptist doctrine was there's the perfect will of God, there's the second perfect will of God, and then there's the third perfect will of God. And I got a word for you. There's only one will of God. There's only one will of God. You do what he says or you're in rebellion. How do you find anything else but that in the word of God? <laughs> Well, you know, Pastor, I know I'm not supposed to sin, but I do just a little. But God's fine with that. Uh, no, he said sin separates us from his presence. But wait, you know why he's not, he's not afraid to say that to us? Because Jesus gave his whole life to become righteous and then give you and I his righteousness. So no. He doesn't put up with sin. Why? Because he gave you his righteousness. And if Jesus was right, no, not if. Since Jesus was righteous and he gave you his righteousness and listen, and made you into his righteousness. What does that mean you and I get to do? We get to be righteous. Wait, like Jesus 
See, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, when the revelation gets past the top of your head and soaks in through your hair, gets down inside the skull and gets down in here, all of a sudden, you and I realize um, God's done a really big, powerful work in my life. Glory be to God, and I'm going to enjoy every bit of it. And now, you don't have to any longer make an excuse for sin. Why? Because you get to walk in the righteous, in the righteousness of God. That is not the word for tonight. <laughs> what is the word for tonight? That was just the rest area overlooking Lake Superior. That's all that was. Just <laughs> bam. You know what? We stopped on the way home. On the way. One way or the other. We were going that way. And there was this roadside park. And we stopped to catch a couple snoozes. And um, I got up in the morning because it's Lake Superior. So I'm going to go look. Well, <laughs> I, I walk. And we weren't by like a, a beach. But there was a beach. But it wasn't by the beach. Anyways. So you just have to walk through this little bit of woods. And, and there was really bad erosion. So where I'm standing is like five feet above the beach level. And little Ripley with his little short legs jumped right off it. Yeah. I turned around to look at a car going by. And I, I when I turned back, I'm like, where'd you go, Ripples? And I look, and he's down there. He jumped five feet down because he's headed to the water. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, I have no idea why I got on that, that rest area thing overlooking Lake Superior. But anyways, I, I was there and it was a really good point and I'm enjoying being there. So I hope you enjoyed it with me. There was a really good point right there. So <laughs> we'll bring it back later. So we know what he's talking about. <laughs> it was the cutest thing. Ripley looked up at me like I'm trying dad, but I can't seem to get up over that five feet of I, and he jumped. Yeah, that dark sea's water, he is in it. Hallelujah. What did that and have to do with anything? Get back up, so you had to climb down and get him back up? Is that I right? just had to jump like he did. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. There was a really good reason I was telling that story. What was it? I, I, we don't know. Holy Spirit, show us. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad you guys enjoyed the story about Lake Superior. It was very beautiful. The water was like glass. It was cool that morning when it was up. Five o'clock in the morning, the sun was up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, what's the word tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Now, um, we thank you. Did you get me some coffee, love, while you're up? Thank you. Um, you said when you woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca, for that. Sooner or later, it'll soak back in, but I'm just not going to worry about it anymore. We're going to let it go. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Thank God for a good trip. We had a good trip home. And um, it was pretty cool because it, was, it actually turned into a two-day trip. It took us like 48 hours to get home. But on the way home, we was really working our faith, exercising our faith, uh, going after going after uh, the inheritance that's ours, standing in faith, and seeing the things of God come to pass in our life. And I'm going to tell you right now, God is moving in this day. And you and I have just got to live in it and grow in it and develop in it and let him take us into the presence of God and the ways of God. You know what? God is bigger than anything in our life. He's bigger than anything. And he's taking us in. And we're glad that you're here with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, I'm sure that what I was getting ready to say was like a sidetrack and a side trail. And I'm not sure what it was, but it's okay. We had a good time. And was probably just trying to talk about getting home and and being here and being a part and 
It's pretty cool. You get here to North Dakota, and the sun don't set right now until after 11 o'clock at night. It's very interesting how God's world works. Now, that's what it's like here in North Dakota. What must it be like in northern Saskatchewan? The sun wouldn't go down at all, evidently. And um, I like it when that happens. And you, you just, it's, you don't know when to go to sleep. I really like it when that happens. If you've never experienced the, the, uh, the uh, midnight sun, it's a real experience to experience. Make sure you put it on your bucket list, as people say. Because when you get there, make sure you got a bucket with you. Because the first couple of nights, you're going to want to stick it over top of your head. So you can finally go to sleep in darkness. We did go through Duluth. We actually love Duluth. Yeah, we love Duluth. That's one Duluth of my is favorites. a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, bunch of crazy liberals live there. Oh. Some really, really crazy people live in that place. And um, may they all find Jesus and get saved. Amen. Everybody say it. May revival come to the Duluth. Everywhere the sole of your foot treads upon, you should speak life. Interesting. It is. Are you ready for the word? Yes. I'm still trying to dig up why I said that a minute ago. <laughs> well, um, our verse for the month is about the glory of God. The uh, June verse of the month um, comes from um, John. No, John. No, we'll get it right. John 17. It's very interesting. But it's okay. Here we go. John chapter 17, verse 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. John 17, 22. Let's read it again. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. This whole month, we've been focused on the glory of the Lord. And when you think about the different things that God has spoken to us throughout this month in our evening program, it has continually brought us back to this statement and talking about and living in and dwelling in the glory of God. Now, what's interesting about God is God says, I want you to do this. And then when you do this, God gets involved and make thing, makes things happen. And look at what it says in John 17, 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Well, what is the glory that God has given us? When you think about it. The greatest glory that God has given us through Jesus is his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Say it with me. Thank God for his righteousness. Thank God for his righteousness. I'm telling you, I'm all right. I'm just looking at this note. I don't know who you are that changed this. I'm not sure why you tried to change it. 
And please don't ever change my notes again. Because I know the last time I left it, it looked like this. <laughs> Here we go. Now, I want you to go with me. If you're in John 17, I want you to see these references about this verse of scripture. Because our assignment for tonight is uh, in our title, We Speak Life. It is time to win the world for Jesus. Say this with me. It is time for me God bless you, Joachim. We're glad to have you, man. Anytime you can be here with us and study, we're glad to have you here and be a part of what God's doing. Uh, we're now going to be in the Word and uh, get your Bible out and study it with us. If you don't have a Bible, download download e-sword.net under your phone, your computer, or your tablet, e-sword.net. You can find it in all the app stores. Um, and uh, I encourage you, that's a really good Bible app to have on your phone. And then um, you can always go to BibleGateway.com. Those of you that are with us, if you would help us put those links in there to these different places, I would appreciate that so that he could see that with us. Uh, not everybody has a Bible, and we want people to have a Bible that you can hold in your hand. But even if you don't have that, um, you can still download a Bible. BibleGateway.com can be reached from any browser on any computer. It's just a website, but it's a pretty amazing website because it has just about every translation of the Bible available. And it gives you the ability to follow along right online. Now, the only downfall of online is if the power goes out, so does the Bible. And that's why you want to carry one of these around because this, this doesn't bling, ding, blink, or go, or go blank. It's like the guy who said, does anybody know how to charge milk? Mine's at 2%. <laughs> Wilma Tony, thank you. Appreciate your help, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you for your help. Yes. Now, watch thank this. You, you. Um, we are going. Where was we at? Oh, we're in John 17. I want to read these reference verses from John 17 that deals with the glory of God because where God has taken us tonight is to begin to speak the word of God not only over Flint, but over your city and my city, everywhere you go, speak life. Now, um, Sister Leanne and I do that everywhere we go. So when, when Rebecca spoke that about Duluth, well, yeah, we drive through Duluth and we speak life in that city. And um, we, we, you know, mom said last, my mom said last week yeah. when she was on about the Apostle Paul walking through all those cities. When you go to the next missionary journey, you re realize Paul won all of those cities to Jesus. Even though the first time he was there, he didn't preach there. Yeah, that was really good. Now, just so you know, I've not preached in any of these cities between Williston and West Branch. Mm -hmm. um, but we have driven through a lot of cities between Williston and West Branch. And may God win every one of them to him. John chapter 17, verse 24 and 25. <clears throat> Look at what Jesus said. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. John 17, 24 and 25. Verse number 25. Oh, righteous father. Get that thought. Oh, righteous father. The world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. 
Now, <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verses 28 through 33. Somebody shout, I love the word. I knew you did. That's why I was encouraging you to shout it. Somebody shout, I love the word. See, look, I want you to see something here. Oh, Jesus. Look at what you're showing us tonight. See, God, you, God said for the... the, 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 the uh, hold on. Dan Cottle, thank you, man. <laughs> wait, Brother Dan, Brother Dan made a post. Everybody wave. <laughs> I don't know. It's just an interesting thing. Because now it says Rebecca Smith is watching. Everybody wave at Rebecca. I love I love it. I think it's really a cool thing. Here we go. What did I say? Matthew 6, 28. Ah, we can't do that. It's what's in my notes because it's the key point. They should read all of the verses, love. So even though I'm going to change it, and all of you are going to say, Pastor, just give us the verses. Yeah. <laughs> so what's it going to be now? It's going to be 25 through 33. All right. All right. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they are? That's good, Rebecca. <laughs> it's all right. You guys do a great job. I appreciate your help. Okay. 28 through 33 are the key verses. 25 through 33 are the, all of them. Here we go. So sad. I'm, I'm greater than the birds. 27. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider... The lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of them. Remember about the story of Solomon. Solomon, his clothing and the clothing of his servants and the order of his house was so perfect yeah. that the queen of Sheba fainted when she come in and saw it. She went out under the glory of order. All right, let's keep reading. Um, toil and spin. Uh, let's see. 30. Now, now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, all you of little faith? Keep reading. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Oh, this is just good. For after all of these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his Righteousness. Do you realize that what makes us more glorious than Solomon is our righteous robe? Wow. Wow. They shout glory, Sila, wow, 
or something. Jesus just said all of that about putting clothes on and provision and eating and all the rest of it. And then he makes that statement. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Whose righteousness is it that he's talking about? Jesus. The kingdom of God's righteousness. Look at what Jesus said to the father in John 17. Oh, righteous father. What is the very foundation of the throne of God? Righteousness and justice. The very foundation of the throne of heaven is righteousness. Do you remember what Jesus' scepter is called? A scepter of righteousness. And Jesus just said to you and I in this set of verses that we should seek first the kingdom of God and be clothed in his righteousness. And all of these things are added to you. Why? Because it's the righteousness of God that draws all the glory of God out of heaven. Oh, my Lord Jesus, are we. We done fell off the creek bed and down in the water. If you was down where Phyllis was, and you'd be hunting them crayfish, clicking their eyes, eating them alive. Woo, Jesus, are they good. Oh, my goodness sakes alive. Now, I, I'm telling you, I'm actually reading from notes right now. This isn't by the Holy Spirit. Well, it was by the Holy Spirit sometime when I put it in there. I want you to see this. Solomon didn't have the righteousness of God. He was wise. He, he chased after God for a while until he chased after all them other women. And then you ain't no longer the wisest man on earth after you married about, you know, the 10th the wife, I would think, or something. Oh, my goodness. Look at what it says. Twenty eight. He says. About the lilies of the field. 29 he says. And Solomon in all of his glory. Was like them. Now. Luke. 11. <laughs> this, these are not my notes for tonight, although these are notes I have on a piece of, on my notepad over there. These are actually notes. Luke 11. Wow. Wow. For all the versatiers, it's 29 through 36. Is it going to stay 29? And that is what it's going to stay. And I'm going to read a few verses out of the middle, but I gave you the whole reference point. Thank you so much for your help, guys. Everybody wave at Rebecca. Look at this. 29. While the crowds were thickly gathered together. That says thickly gathered together. I never saw that word before. I'm circling that word. It is funny, isn't they began to say, 
This is an evil generation that seeks a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. 30. For as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so also the Son of Man will be to this generation. Look at 31. The Queen of the South will rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. Wow. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. Well, who is greater than Solomon? Jesus. And who has Jesus living on the inside of him? We do. Hallelujah. Everybody wave. If you guys have that wave button, everybody hit the wave button once. I don't know. I don't see it. Whoops. I mean, there's a there's a glory hand. Hallelujah. I hit the glory hand. Woo! I got two of them on there. Let's do this now. That's the clapping hands. That's a what? Those are clapping. These are glory hands. They're the ones that are just. Oh, I don't have any other hand. That's my only. Anyways, let's go to Luke 12. Wow. 22 through 34 is the whole reference. <laughs> oh, my goodness sakes alive. Here we go. We're going to start at 22. Now, this sounds like Matthew, but listen to what it says. When he said to his disciples, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Just so you pause for a minute. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John did not sit in a big room together, all writing their book at the same time. Hey, Luke, what are you putting in? All right, I'll put this in. They did not do that. These are holy men of God who wrote at different times the, the word of God led by the Holy Spirit of God inspiration. Isn't that interesting? And it was many, many, many years later. And it was years later. Yeah. And it was separately by themselves. Yeah. Confirming the word of God boldly with the signs follow. All right. What you will eat, 23. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens. For they neither sow, sow nor reap which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than an old dirty bird raisin, raven? I remember one time I was riding my motorcycle somewhere. I was all bummed out about something, and I was just in one horrible, serious, stupid, ignorant complain mode. And I, I'm leaving West Branch, and I'm at the 215 getting up on the expressway on that long entrance oh, ramp, yeah. all right? And I'm throttling up. I'm riding a Harley Davidson in the middle of the day going to do the work of the ministry. And I'm complaining. How stupid can any man be? <laughs> and a bird flew up out of the ditch and hit the windshield and fell over on the side of the road dead. And I heard the father say, I saw that one. And I quit my complaining right then. Matter of fact, I repented of my sin of complaining. Do you realize complaining is a sin? Complaining is a sin. The gripers got the vipers in the book of Exodus. Mm -hmm. they died. A snake bit them because they were griping against the work that Moses was doing. Yeah. The poison of their griping drew the snake, and it killed them. 25,000 died that day by a snake bite because they were complainers. Have you ever been one? Don't admit it, but I, I'm telling you right now, quick. repent quickly as soon as you catch yourself there. 
Here we go. Verse 25. And which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? If you are not then able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They need well nor spin, and yet I say even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If God so clothed the grass, which today is, in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? What is he talking about clothing us in? His righteousness. 29, and do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink or be uh, or have an anxious mind. Remember when you was a kid in high school and you made a foul, you had to raise your hand so they knew who to put the foul to? Maybe you don't know that that happened. I don't. Yeah, they did that. That way the guy in the bench knew who did the foul. Because if the if the uh, the refs pointing like that, well, there's ten guys out there. How does he know? You had oh, to raise your hand. Basketball. Yeah, you had to raise your hand. If you're guilty of being anxious, raise your hand. Everybody wave. <laughs> I think it's no, hey I'm Dan, don't repenting. stop waving, man. <laughs> I just repent and that's all. Oh, well, I'm telling you right now, I think that's awesome. If that's what that is, every time somebody does that, they're waving their hand. Come on, Jesus. I, I just got blessed all over again, just like that. <laughs> Watch. Oh, you have little faith. 30. For all these things the nations of the world seek after. Wow. And your father knows you need all those things. But seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Do not fear, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Well, what is the greatest thing he's going to give you? And that is his righteousness. It's the whole kingdom. 33, sell what you have and give alms. Provide for yourself money bags. Which do not grow old. A treasure in the heavens that does not fail. Where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is... There your heart will be also. Oh, I got to get to another set of verses. All righty. <laughs> Revelation 19. Ooh. Revelation 19. Now, wait. I didn't give you the verses yet. I'm, I'm, I slowed We're down. We're ready. We're ready. <clears throat> Oh my goodness. I'm 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 a, I'm a, I'm coffee. A... I can tell you right now I'm coming back to preach these verses another day. Revelation 19. Um, we're going to do five through uh, ten, but um, I'm going to read six through eight, right. six through nine. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude. As the sound of many waters, as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Seven, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb 
has come and his wife has made herself ready. Now, I'm fixing to mess with your doctrine just a little. Because when is the marriage supper of the Lamb? After the rapture. And when is the rapture? I thought maybe she knew. I was just asking. She she gave the answer to the other one real quick. And I, I'm like, maybe she's got it. Maybe she's got it. I know she's holy and righteous. Maybe she's got it. And when I said, and when is that? She got to look like, what are you, do you not know the Bible? <laughs> no man knows the day or the hour, right? right. So the bride to be, everybody say the bride to be, the bride to be. must remain ready. Must remain ready. You ready? I'm just going to mess with your doctrine just a little. So I want you to grab a hold of your chair and hold on because there will probably be just a slight amount of sputtering going on. You are not the body, the bride of Christ yet. Wait, wait, wait a minute. The marriage supper of the Lamb happens at the marriage, right? Yes, yes. So before the marriage, what are you consider? Betrothed. Betrothed. <laughs> Very good King James word. Name another one. Engaged. Engaged. That's a modern day word. Stick with the King Jimmy. <laughs> Espoused. Espoused. There you go. Now watch. So right now, we're not the bride of Christ. Fiance. There you go. Very good, oh, Rebecca. Yeah, there you go. But I, this is what I want you to see in these verses I'm reading right now. The marriage supper of the Lamb happens after the, 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 woo, the rapture of the church. So right now, we're not the lamb's wife. We are espoused. But um, it ain't done. The marriage is after we're caught away. If, 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 <laughs> if you remember about, I don't know, it's probably been six months ago now that mom told us about that, that, that deal. Of the of the um, marriage thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Been that long, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very good. It was a depiction of Jesus talking to the disciples about a marriage mm -hmm. and being ready. This is what I want to. Uh, this is what this is what I see right here doing this. I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm just, whew, trying to get all this revelation out at the same time. I want you to see this. Mm -hmm. The bride-to-be must remain ready. Well, thank you, Phyllis. I was trying to get it out and didn't know you already typed it in there for me. <laughs> she did. She's way ahead of you. <laughs> Phyllis is not caught in the leg tonight. She's laying it out there. <laughs> preach, Phyllis. Preach. That's awesome. <laughs> See, right now we're the bride-to-be. What is the attire of the bride to be? She's not in her fancy wedding dress. Right. She's in preparation. Right. Wait. You got to get the house ready. You got to get the reception place ready. You got to get and you got to get and you got to invite the friends and you got to send out the announcements. 
and you got to send and you got to do and you got to prepare and you got to get ready. What are you and I doing right now on this earth? Getting ready. But you're not the bride of Christ because once you become the bride of Christ, you sit around and look pretty. And there's a whole bunch of the church right now that wants to sit around in their church building and look pretty. And they're not doing a single thing to help anybody else know who they are. God, send me a drum. Help our time together be a little more animated. Let's keep reading. Verse number seven. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Wow, right there. Right there. That's why you and I got to get this revelation of his righteousness, because from this point on, your righteousness is what is arraying the bride of Christ. And the beautiful white robes, the righteous act of the saints. If you ain't sitting in your house going, wow, I don't know what to tell you. Nine, he said, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. Revelation 21, verses 1. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just the whole chapter. It's just the whole chapter. It is. Let's just read. Ready? Here we go. Wait, everybody wave. If you got the wave button on your phone, click it. Let me see what happens. Everybody click the wave button. Rebecca Smith is watching. Wait, everybody click the wave button right now if you have one on your phone. Wait, that's not a command. That's a request. Please, if you would, click the wave button. It's a new thing, and it's fun. I'm, 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 I'm like fired up about this. It's like, oh, glory, hallelujah. Whoa, I'm ignoring you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Rebecca. You're going to get anything out of this message. You're going to have to do something besides ignore me. That's so funny. <laughs> hey, everybody waving. Julian and Vamala's waving. Look at this. We love you guys. Happy anniversary. Wait, let's sing it again. 53 years. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Julian and Mama. Happy anniversary to you. Amen, fellas. Keep oiling them lamps. Here we go. 21, verse 1. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. Pew. All right. I don't know if that's what it'll sound like. It'll be fervent heat and they'll be gone. Watch this. I, John, saw the new, the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from out of heaven from God. Are you ready? Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Everybody just hold on. We're going to keep reading here. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself will be with them. 
and be their God. Say it. God is with me and in me. God is with me and in me. Four. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death, sorrow, crying, pain, or any of that. Five. He said, he who sat on the throne said, I make all things new. I'm going to tell you right now, when he gave you Jesus righteousness, he made you all the way, totally, completely brand new. Have you noticed what 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says? Any man who is in Christ is a new creation. Uh, let's see. Right for these words are true and faithful. Six, he said to me, I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. Say it with me. I'm overcoming. I'm overcoming. I will not be brought down. I'm going, I will overcome my whole life. And I will be his God and he'll be my, my people. Look at verse 8. It's interesting that right in the middle of all of this glory, he puts verse 8. Wait, yeah. John didn't put it there. The Holy Spirit of God put this verse here. Now watch. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderer, the sexually immoral, the sorcerer, the idolater, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Wow. You cannot be any of those and make heaven. Wow. Just shout it real good. You might even want to type it in. Wait, wait, I'm going to type it in right now. It's just us. We might as well have a good time. Watch this. A, I am a capital letters believer. But well, you see what it says? And the cowardly and the unbelieving will not have their place in heaven. Shout it. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. It's about time you said that. <laughs> Verse 9. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plague came to me and said, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. <coughs> I think we're fixing to see something. He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and he showed me the great city. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Hold it, angel. You said you're showing me the lamb's wife. Having the glory of God. What is the glory of God? The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And what is it, what is it clothed in but the righteous acts of the saints? Having the glory of God, her, her light. The angel said, let me show you the wife, the lamb's bride, the lamb's wife. And he showed us the city. And he said, her light was like the most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And you can keep reading. The righteousness of God is the glory of God. It's the foundation of the throne that makes it shine. Why? In his righteousness, there's no impurity. The lamb without blot, without spot or blemish. And he has washed our robes and made them White as the lamb. 
This is good stuff. Romans chapter 1. Keep your hand in Revelation. Do not yield your position from the book of Revelation. <laughs> we will probably be back there. Romans chapter 1. Look at it. Look at it. Romans chapter 1. Look at this. We are going down here. Did you guys know where to go? No. Well, why didn't you already have it? You're led by the Spirit of God. What's wrong with you? Wow. Um, 16 through 25 is the whole reference. We're going to read. 16 and 17 to start out. Wow. What a night. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Wait. What is the power of God to salvation for everyone believes? But you are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. Watch. 17. For in it, the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith to faith. What does that mean? Because it is written, the just shall live by faith. When you and I function from this level of faith to the next one, you're going to be doing it in the righteousness of God. And until you get all the yuck out of you, you're going to still have to come back to the righteousness regular and say, whoa, 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 whoa. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus that stuff, get out of my life. You don't belong here, get out. You're not me. Say it. Unrighteousness is not me. Righteousness is me. I want you to see it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. 17. In it, the righteousness of God is revealed. That's why these people that are teaching these doctrines of it don't matter. Sin every day, word, thought, and deed. It don't matter. You're going to sin every day. Everybody sins. We're all just sinners saved by grace. It doesn't matter. We're all sin. Uh, no. That is not this book. Do not be condemned if that's you. Be encouraged that Jesus gave you all of his righteousness so you can live in righteousness. God said... Be ye holy as I am holy. But then he didn't just make the statement. He, he sent Jesus. And Jesus gave you his righteousness to do it by. Let's keep reading. This is really good. I, I'm enjoying this so much. I'm enjoying it. Woo! Jesus, glory be to God. Verse 18, look at this statement. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Look at this says, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. People who don't teach that the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus are actually suppressing the truth of the righteousness. And they're doing it by telling men that, that your unrighteousness has no effect on our God. That does not match this book. It might make them feel good, but you can't make the book come down to our level and be what we want it to be. You got to take your life up to the level of his righteousness and realize there ain't none of there ain't another minute minute. Oh Jesus. 
and stuff. Amen. Did you get it? I hope you did. We're done. Let's go home now. All right, let's go. Every one of us got to get this understanding. There ain't nothing you can do to be righteous enough in your own strength for God. Nobody. <laughs> I can tell when I say that, that some people who come and watch the program later are like, oh, my goodness, did you hear what he just said? There's no way I'll ever be righteous enough. No, you won't. But Jesus was. Jesus was. And he, when you receive him, makes you the righteousness of God. You might say, Pastor, I don't know how to do that. No, you don't. Guess what? Neither do I. Do you know who knows how to do it? Jesus. Here's the cool thing. As soon as you say, Jesus, come into my life, he does it. It's done. Uh, Pastor, since Jesus came into my life, I still got some things that's sticking around here. Yeah, that's your soul. And that's your body. That is not your spirit. Your spirit is made one with God immediately when you're born again. And from that day forward, it will be one with God if you chase after righteousness. Amen. Do, do, no, uh, Matt, it's in the book. In the Bible somewhere it says, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, mm -hmm. for they shall be filled with what? Righteousness. Verse 19. I'm going to read 18 again. Romans 1, 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. That's a scary thing, isn't it? Because that, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. That means these guys are in messed up con condition. Mm -hmm. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, give even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they know God, they did not glorify him as God. Wow. That's just. Oh, my goodness. Nor were thankful. Look at what it says, like 21. Because although they knew God, that, that's a past tense verse. Word. New is past. No is present. Because although they knew God. They did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but their but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Wow. Wow. 23. And they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image that is made like a corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creepers things. Look at 24. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Why? Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God and became futile in their mind trying to chase something that was not even God. 25, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forevermore. Amen. Now, let me put that into context for you. There's a lot of pastors in this day who worship the sheep 
and the people coming to their church. Because that's what brings them the amount of money that they have. And they create whatever doctrine it takes to fill the building. And see, Jesus said, or God, by the Holy Spirit said, professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Not everything that's big is wrong. And not everything that's little is right. I'm preaching better than somebody staring right now. See, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed to us. It, you don't earn it. You can't get it. You can't do anything for it except receive it. Listen, you, you can repent of sins all day long and not be born again. You know why? Because repenting of sins... Is not what gets you born again. Pastor, I'm taking you to a verse of scripture in the New Testament. No, I'm going to take you to the verse of scripture in the New Testament. Because what it says in the book of Acts is repent. All right. Acts uh, 2, 38. Hold on. Hurry up. Get there. Acts 2, 38. Hold your place in Romans and Revelation. And now we're going to the book of Acts. Here we go. Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 238 was that one. Now we're going to Acts 10. 38. Wow. <coughs> How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Do you notice that in all through Jesus' ministry, Jesus didn't say to the people that were in front of him, repent and I'll say your sins are forgiven. <laughs> Woo! Thank God for the revelation that he's given us tonight. Pastor, how in the world do you find God? You accept Jesus and his righteousness. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, well guys, the only thing you're ever going to have to do is receive him. John chapter 1. All right. All right. Well, we might as well go there. Since you're going to ask the question, we might as well go there. John chapter 1. I'm really trying to be done. I'm off my notes a long time ago. John 1, but it's all right because it's good. John chapter 1, verse 11, and we're going to go down. Glory be to God, down to verse 18. John 1, 11, 18. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. They didn't do what? They didn't receive him. Look at verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power, the right to become the children of God just by receiving Jesus. Not repenting of their sin. He gave them right to become the children of God to those that believe in his name. So what do you do? I believe in you and I receive you. It's right there in verse 12. Here we go, 13. 
who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but they were born of God. 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Break down righteousness, and what do you get? Grace and truth. See, guys, John 3, 16. Uh, let the Bible do the talking. I'm trying to preach, but let's let the Bible do the talking. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever confessed every sin he ever committed and didn't leave one out to them, Jesus said, you'll be born again. That is not what it says. Somebody just shout it out loud. Preach it right. Preach it right. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you notice there's no repent word in there anywhere? Let's try verse 17. Maybe that's where the repent word. For God sent not his son into this world to condemn the world. But as soon as the world repented of all their sins, they might be saved. Well, all right, all right, all right. Let's keep going. Verse number, number 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not he has not confessed all of his sins. It is not. You see what 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 goes on is we're trying to do something in our own ability to get what God has for us. And um Jesus said you must be born again. And then he said. God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, his only begotten son, will not perish. And But have everlasting life. There's no repent word in that. You know why? Because if you believe in him and you accept his righteousness that he gives you, all that sin is just totally deleted. And it's gone. How can you and I ever remember every sin we ever sin? I speak life to all y'all's brain, but some of you can't even remember what you did today. And may life come into your body and your brain and your mind. No, because he didn't make it that way. He made it very simple. My yoke is easy and my burden is light if you receive me. To, to those who receive me, to them, he gives the ability, the right, the power to become the child of God. See, all of a sudden, we take all of the teeth out of getting someone born again, and we just make it as simple as what God made it. Receive Jesus. Pastor, what do I have to do? Receive Jesus. No, but I mean, but what do I do? Receive Jesus. But not like I have to confess my sins and, and like go to the altar and pray and cry. No. Ready? Romans. I'm trying to be done. It just ain't working. You ready? We haven't had a night like this in a while. Forgive me, Jesus, for whatever reason we haven't had it. But you got to get this because this is. Woo! Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Romans 15, um, uh, verse 16 through 19. Ready? Romans 15, 16 through 19. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. Well, that's good. Verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, 
You ready this? But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because as soon as you receive righteousness, guess what you have? Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, but I have to repent of my sins, Pastor. Well, either that or let Jesus just delete them. Because the blood of a lamb doesn't wash them and cover them. It purges them. Purge. That means cleaning with force. 18. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For he who serves Christ in, in these things is acceptable to God and approved by him. 19. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. It, this isn't difficult what you should say or do in the kingdom of God. Is it peace or are you creating strife? And does it edify or are you tearing someone down? If you're not of peace and edifying, your conversation will tear somebody down. And you're wrong. Guess what? You don't even have to be a Bible scholar to understand it. Oh, uh, That doesn't edify. Uh, what did you say? I, I'm sorry, brother, sister, what you just said doesn't edify. Stop. I don't, I'm not listening to you. No, 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 no. I'm not going to listen to you. Because the kingdom of God is righteousness. And then what does righteousness create? Peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because as soon as you receive the righteousness, all of that is gone. Hebrews chapter 1. It's all right. I got somebody, I got somebody here saying, Pastor, show me. I'm, I like people from Missouri. You know why? Because... They're the people who say, show me. Hebrews 1, 1 through 4. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't get tired. Have another drink of coffee. You're going to make it all the way to the end. God, who at various times and in various ways spoken in the times past to the prophets, to the fathers by the prophets. All right? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Jesus, Joseph, and me. Two. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son, which is what the whole book of Hebrews is about is Jesus. Who he is and what he did. Whom he has appointed heir of all things. Jesus by an appointment became the heir, and you and I are joint heirs with Jesus. Say it. I'm a joint heir. I'm a joint heir. All right. Through him who made all the worlds. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory. And the express image of his person. Upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins. Wait. When did he do it? When did Jesus purge our sins? I'm waiting for somebody to give me an answer. When did Jesus purge our sins? Well, at Pastor at the cross, that's true. But really? Jesus became the land slain before the foundation of the world. Jesus became the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And then is when he purged our sins. But it doesn't happen in your life until you receive his righteousness. Man, this is good. This is. This is good meat, potatoes, gravy, peas, corn, beans, and squash. Mm -hmm. Say it. He's purged my sins. He has purged my sins. Wait. He didn't purge them 
because you confessed every one of them. He purged them because you received his righteousness. And he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels. Look at it says, and has by an inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they all and said, I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. Goodness sakes alive. Have we had some meat in here tonight? I don't know. Is this meat or milk and honey? I think this is apple pie a la mode. It's what we had tonight. Mm -hmm. Verse number eight, Hebrews 1 8. But to the Son, He, God, says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Woo! You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, look at this word, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Why? Because you delighted in righteousness, not in unrighteousness. Here you go, Rebecca. Glory be to the Lamb of God and a big kick. Woo! Wow! And our righteous acts. Amen, Phyllis. Our righteous acts are the glorious robes and the brightness of the shining of the new Jerusalem. You know what that means? That means when unrighteousness shows up, you stay righteous. Yeah, amen. And actually, it means rebuke. Confront unrighteousness boldly. Look, look people in the eye and say, your unrighteousness is not going to take me away from God. Do not do that to me. Pastor, what if, what if I don't know it's unrighteousness or not? You'll know it's unrighteousness very simply by the fact, is it bringing edification <coughs> and comfort and wisdom and peace? Because if it's not bringing that, it is not of God. Why? It doesn't matter if I say lying is a sin. I'm not going to sit here and beat you for lying. I'm going to say, here's righteousness to fix it. See, all of a sudden we realize, wait, this ain't about church. It ain't about no denomination. This is about you and I being part of the body of Christ. And the body of the very Christ is who we are. And guess what that means? You, there ain't no schism in this body. Schism is of the devil. <laughs> Here's the, here's the glorious part of this. All of a sudden, you and I get real bold. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Why do we get bold? Because we're, we're filled with and we're living in righteousness. <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus. I thought Dutch meant with cheese. <laughs> no, it's that wonderful crumbly stuff on the top instead of a crust. 
We are now having the le the next lesson for tonight will be apple pie with the ladies who cook. We studied really hard. Now we need a snack. <laughs> Everyone that's enjoyed the study of righteousness, we're now going to be in the line over to the right. Apple pie is served hot. Ice cream if you'd like it. And a big cup of coffee is available. For those of you who can't sleep when you drink coffee, we actually have decaffeinated for you. So you'll be able to have a wonderful night of milk and honey before you fall asleep. Amen. Wait. So you can sit around righteousness tonight and rejoice in God. Amen. Giving glory to God. Wow, what a night. Sorry. You know, you know, Rebecca, I, you know, I've kind of let this thing slide for a while, but I'm probably going to have to start dealing with you about this. <laughs> it's all right. It's what this is all about. We love each other and we're just doing the work of God. Thank you, Lord, for your righteousness. We're going to end up back where we started, John 17. <laughs> Julian Vamala, we'll have some apple pie and ice cream. <laughs> Phyllis started it. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait, we can't go back to the, to the garden and start pointing fingers at other people. It's not Phyllis. I'm the one that said apple pie a la mode. True, you started it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I agree with Julian and Vamala. We'll have apple pie and ice cream. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know where to go to find apple pie in this place when we're done, but we're gonna have some tonight sooner or later. Walmart, if you hurry. Walmart, if I hurry, it's too late. We can't get there. Oh, that's true. They close at 10. Somebody just Later on, send us a picture of a hot piece of apple pie. Oh, and my room. goodness, torture. John 17, verse 20. I made fried apple pies yesterday. Fried apple pies, Mama? That sounds yummy. How do you do that? Everybody pause for a moment, bow their head in silence. <laughs> huh. Woo! Fried apple pies. Wow. We need to know this. Wow. Okay. So for tomorrow morning session, Sister Wilma will be teaching from her kitchen how to make fried apple pies. Hallelujah. <laughs> She'll be going live on Zoom at about um, uh, 10, uh, 1100 hours. And then, you know, she'll be finished by the time we start the prayer. <laughs> That sounds absolutely delicious. Yeah, it really does. I made yeah, fried apple easy. pies. How do you make a fried apple pie? I don't know, but you have to teach us this, girl. Woo! <laughs> this is what I like about it. Fried apple and pie. It doesn't matter how you did it. I already like it because it's fried, it's apple, and it's pie. Amen. Yeah. John 17, we're going to finish this and we're going to go, I'm going to be the end of Shiniga. Verse 20, I do not pray for these alone, but I pray for those who will believe in me through their word. Aren't you glad you and I are believing in him because of the word of God? Yes. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. That they may be one just as we are one. Amen. And that's the glory. And what gets you that glory is Jesus' righteousness. I in them, verse 23, and you in me. That they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. 
verse 25. Oh, righteous Father, have you noticed that righteousness is the center of everything we are? But it's not our righteousness. It's his. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray. Father, thank you. For the wonderful, glorious, magnificent, majestic word of God. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. And your righteousness, we receive it, Jesus. We receive. You took those sins to hell, dropped them there, crushed all unrighteousness forever. We receive our place in you. And because you so willingly give us your righteousness, we receive it and we walk in it diligently every day. We walk in it diligently every day. And we thank you for it. And we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise. Because you alone are the you the you alone are worthy, Jesus. You alone are worthy. And you have given us your righteousness. And you've clothed us in the righteousness of God, which is Christ Jesus. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. What a night. We give you praise, Lord. Amen. We give you praise, Lord. Now, make sure you grab these verses. Sister Leanne has put the verses in there. And um, somehow, <laughs> I encourage you to continually study these verses. And I ask that you continually pray for God's hand of blessing and provision to come because another whole thing to do here in the ministry, but I, I got to have time to do it. You can't, can't make it happen until Till God moves and brings victory. And I thank you for your prayers for us every day. Thank you. And we know this. That when all else fails. Get you some dough. Put your cooked apples in the dome and then fry them. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and then maybe roll them in powdered sugar after they come out. <laughs> How long do I fry them, Pastor? Well, you go by the color on the sides until they're brown a little bit on each side. God is good. Hey, mom's with us. Hi. Love you, mom. Good to have you with us tonight. Yes, sprinkle sugar 
on top. Yeah, wow. Sugar. Awesome. Cinnamon and sugar. Oh, yeah. Huh? This is getting it, better by the I, second. They You're could be in the frying tonight. pan by midnight here. <laughs> now, I know some of you don't make stuff and eat it at midnight, but <laughs> our schedule is, um, you know, usually we go, go to bed about 1.30 uh, by the time we get done here. But, um, wow. Yeah, we're making some. <laughs> <laughs> I put cinnamon in the apples. Yeah, oh, yeah. well, you never can have too much cinnamon and sugar. No, cinnamon is a very good health food, so that just makes this a health. Food. Cinnamon and sugar is a very good health food. It, it cinnamon works. Cinnamon and apples. It works good. Cinnamon food. and apples and sugar makes a very good health food. <laughs> <laughs> You're home safe. It's a long yeah, trip, but so we got home safe. Home too. Are you on your way out here now? We're home. You can come visit. Yes, we're home. You can come visit. <laughs> Jump the Amtrak, enjoy the ride, and we'll pick you up right down here at the Amtrak station. Amen. Ripley would be glad to see you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, everybody wave if you got the wave button. It's time for us to receive. And worship the Lord with the Holy Communion, the new covenant worship. First Corinthians chapter 11. Now, for those of you that are new here, we don't always give out apple pie recipes right about the time of communion, but sometimes we do. And it's all right. And when we do, <laughs> they are absolutely delicious. <laughs> New covenant worship. Here we go. For I received from the Lord that which I deliver to you. <laughs> that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25. In the same manner after supper, he also took the cup. And he, <clears throat> and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. I love this verse. As often as you drink it, drink it. In remembrance of me. 26. For as often as you eat this bread. And as often as you drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's redemptive work. Until he comes. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread. And drink of the cup. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves. We would not be judged. First John chapter 4 verse 17. Love. Has been perfected among us in this. Perfect love. That we may have boldness. In the day of judgment. Why? Because you've already judged yourself. By the light of the Holy Spirit of God. And then what does it say? Because as he is, Jesus is. So are we in this world. Verse 18, perfect love. Cast out fear. And the torment that goes with it. Now, I know that 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 doesn't say it. Those words exactly but since perfect love cast out fear and fear has torment I'm not reading the verse quote unquote verbatim I'm declaring to you the doctrine of God 
perfect love of God cast out the fear and the torment that goes with it. First Corinthians chapter 11. Therefore, there's no fear in the communion element for those who are walking with him. Amen. For those who come to church and play a game without examining themselves, you drink damnation to yourself. But we don't have to focus on that if we're walking with God. Yeah, but pastor, what if there's somebody who comes and they are drinking damnation to themselves? It's because they refuse to submit to the things of God. And when they come in the building, that's their own deal. How are you going to change it? I'm going to teach everybody who comes there. If you'll examine yourself, you don't have to worry about the damnation. Because that's the answer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Are you ready? Pray this prayer of salvation. This prayer of rededication. And this prayer of hallelujah, I'm a child of God with me right now. For those of you who don't know God, this is your time to come to him. For those of you that may be coming back to God, welcome back. Pray this prayer. For those of you that are believers, shout glory as we pray this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I know I need you in my life. I know I need you in my life. In every area. In every area. And according to John chapter 1. And according to John chapter 1. When I believe in you. When I believe in you. And I receive you, Jesus. And I receive you, You Jesus, give me the power. You give me the power. To become a child of God. To become a child of God. I enter in through the door, Jesus. I enter in through the door, Jesus, And I receive you now. And I receive you now. Into my life. Into my life. Hallelujah. Just pause for a moment. Just receive. Now do this. Say, here's all my sin. Put them in a big ball and toss it out the window. Here's all my sin. Do this. I receive all of your righteousness. I receive all of your righteousness. Please. Filling every part of my life. Filling every part of my life. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the Pray word of God. in my heavenly prayer. Pray in my heavenly prayer. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer. I pray this in Jesus' mighty I name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Pause for a minute. Could you open the shade so we can watch the sunset? <laughs> Once the sun gets off the horizon, I like to see the bright, the bright wide open lights of um, the North Dakota sky. And we always have to close the shade while the sun's up or I get the glory on one side of my face. For those of you that just prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the kingdom of God. This is us. You found us. You're in the kingdom. If you prayed that prayer, you're now right with God. Things happen to you. You don't even know what happened. You went from darkness to light in one prayer. You are now filled with light. You went from fear to faith in one prayer. You went from your sin, which you cannot beat. And nobody ever in the ability of this world has ever beaten their own sin on their own strength. To receive in Jesus righteousness, which annihilates, purges every sin of your life. How cool is that? And then when you did that, the father said, adopt them into the family. The Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of you and you are now Heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus. And it's a personal inward witness on the inside of you. You might say, Pastor, how in the world did all of that come to pass? Well, it's just God. Because God doesn't have to do anything to be everywhere. Amen. He's just waiting for you to say, I need you. Bam! And you just got it all of him. <laughs> You just got all of it. Your sins literally were just purged. 
as soon as you said, I believe you, Jesus, and receive you in my life. He's thrown them into the sea of his forgetfulness. Why would he want you to have to remember absolutely every one of them to confess them all to him? When his blood's going to automatically do the work in you. Now, you might say, I don't know, Pastor. Well, they're going to put my email address and website in. So you have the ability to contact me and say, hey, Pastor, I need to grow in God. Help me grow. I got 10 verses that are the foundation verses of your life. I want you to study them. I want you to meditate in them. I want you to think about them. I want you to read them. I want you to write them in a notebook. I want you to study them, meditate them until they get down inside of you. And the revelation of God's holy word and his ways are happening inside of you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. All of that, all of that just happened in this one prayer. Now, you send me an email, I'll send you the verses. I'll even send you a couple of teachings to go with it so that you can not only meditate in the words, but you'll also be able to hear the teaching on it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We encourage you to dwell in the things of God and enjoy this walk of righteousness. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, we're going to receive the communion elements together. So hurry up and go get some because you're ready to receive them. From this point on, in all of your life, anytime the communion elements are served, you can be a partaker because it's his broken body and you're now a part of the body of Christ. Ready? Hold your elements up. Let's bless them together now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I bless these elements I bless these for this elements. time of communion with you. For this time of communion with you. Jesus, you were wounded. Jesus, you were wounded for my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised for my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement. The chastisement for my peace. For my peace is upon you, Lord. Is upon you. And by, your stripes, and by your stripes, I am healed. I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my in body. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From your body, Jesus. From your body. In the body of Christ and my community. In the body of Christ and my community. And right community. here in this community of faith. And right here in this community. In faith. Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's receive the bread together. Thank you, Jesus. That you stood at that whipping. And you took those stripes for our healing. And now we rejoice in who you are. We lift up a cup of blessing. The blood of Jesus. Pray this with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation with you, my father. With you, my father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin has been placed in remission. Has been placed in remission in my life. In my life. And I thank you. And I thank you, Lord. I'm a new creation. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. And all things have become new. And all things have become new. And I thank you for it. 90 seconds. Wow. <laughs> By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every plague. Every plague. 
as the Passover. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus, I come boldly to the throne room of grace. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. For my assignment every day. For my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the is brethren. Is cast down forever. Is cast down And there's forever. no more condemnation. And there's in my, life. in my life. My conscience is purged. My, conscience is purged. my robes are made white. Are made and, white. I will and I will always. The glorious, the glorious church, church. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. In Jesus mighty, in name. Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the juice together. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I really want to sing that song that um, Chastity Gale sings about the blood. I just don't have it memorized yet. It's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song. So let's go to our old faithful. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white. As snow. Thank you for your blood, dear Jesus. Thank you for your blood, dear Jesus. Thank you for your blood, dear Jesus. It washes white as snow. Thank you for your blood. Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Isn't this a good study tonight of the righteousness of God? Very good study of the blood of Jesus, or of the righteousness of God. You know, if we'll just let the word be the source of our life, it will always lead us into the righteousness of God. When we chase the doctrines of men, it's always going to lead us straight. And it's going to cause strife and confusion. And those are not of God. They're not of God. No matter how, how much you package them, they're just not of God. And we get to have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Isn't that just beautiful? And literally in our lives... I remember thinking, I remember used to, I, I remember, <laughs> I remember I, I used to think this. How do you ever know how to tell what's righteousness and what isn't? Well, when you know, when you know righteousness and you've received it, anything that's not righteousness will be very transparent immediately. Why? Because it won't produce peace and joy. If it's not of peace and joy, it's not of righteousness. Well, but pastor, there's things of righteousness that doesn't bring peace and joy. What? What would it be? No, his yoke is easy. easy. 
and his burden is light. He, Jesus literally said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And you will find rest for your soul. When it begins to trouble you, go back to the righteousness. Because he gave it to you and he made you into it. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Julian and Vamala, from all the way around the world, on the other side. You guys are the ones that have helping me get an understanding about how God's got a group of people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the way around the globe, praying thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you guys for being a part of this with us. Oh, this is their anniversary. <laughs> Bless you. Whatever night it was, I, I thought we was already there. Bless you again tonight, and may you have fried apple pie today. Fried apple pie today. We bless you guys. I saw that meal you had there on your table in them green bananas or something in the background. I'm not sure what it was, but I'm like, oh, Jesus, I want to try some of that right there. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We sure love you guys. Thank you, Brother Dan. Everybody wave. <laughs> All right, that's it for tonight. Once again, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. And say it with me. I receive the commanded blessing right now. Why? Because we're dwelling together in unity. In Jesus, my name. Till we see you again, this is what we say. We love, we love you, you. And God loves you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is. is. Mom's waving. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Mom. They are ripe green bananas. Yum. Oh, Wilma, wait, too. Wilma? Bless you, Wilma. Green bananas. Huh. <laughs> huh. See you tomorrow for the noon prayer. Jesus mighty name.